Welcome back to another video. Hope you are having a great day. And today we are going to take a look at a 10 gigabit switch, which will allow us to upgrade our local network with a management interface, 10 gigabit connectivity, along with 24 one gigabit. This is the key SF. PTEC S5300 2040, which means 24 1 gigabit connections, T4X, which means 4 10 gigabit connections. I will leave a link down below so that you can check all the specifications. It has a management interface that we are also going to take a look in more detail. And by the way, if you are using Windows 10 or Windows 11 on your computer and still haven't activated, don't forget to check out KeysFan, where you can find budget official OM keys at an affordable price. And with the coupon code that you can see on screen and down below on the video description, it will get even cheaper. Now, let's take a look at the 10 gigabit switch. Now it comes inside a simple box with a cable to connect to the power, also a serial cable and the amounts to put it on a rack if we want. It's all made of metal, so no plastics whatsoever right over here. Very well built. It has 44 centimeters wide, 18 centimeters deep and 4.5 centimeters high with a weight of 3.2 kilos. At the back we have the power input and a on off switch. At the front we have the one management port, LED indicators of the port status and the system activity, 24 ports with 1 gigabit speed and 4 ports with 10 gigabit speed and SFP plus connectivity. Now that means that if we want to connect a normal RG45 cable we will need to use one of these adapters which we have used not only in switches but also on those mini firewalls that we review here on the channel which have 10 gigabit and we can can connect ethernet cables or fiber optics so this is a great solution as well i will leave a link down below so that you can check it out it can be mounted on the racks with the supports that we have seen or we can use the rubber feet to put it like i have right now and just put it on any other surface that we want in a regular office, a regular home. I did open the unit just to see how it is put together. The components are well organized and they seem to be of good quality. We can see the four heat sinks, one for the main ship and then three more for each set of eight ports. It also has space and openings for a second power supply. Now this means that we can put in a second one and have redundancy or probably means as well that this case it's used for another models that already come with a second power supply and give us that redundancy in case that one fails. It has no fans so only passive cooling which is great suitable for small offices or even at home where we don't want to have noisy fans around our environment. Capacity wise it can go up to 128 gigabits of bandwidth and it's easy to see that we will never reach that high because we have 24 gigabit right over here plus 40 we will reach a maximum of half of that speed. In terms of power consumption really nice as well 22 watts on idle and a maximum of 35 watts if it's fully being used five-year warranty by kia cfp tech and they ship here in europe and also on us so a fast deliver now also fast is the test that we did now i did test out with my macbook pro and mac studio connecting to the 10 gigabit and no surprises there we were able to reach the 10 gigabits as advertised besides that we also took a look at the web interface and i'm going to share with you some of the details we can by the way connect via the dedicated port right over here or we can connect to one of the rg45 right over here and manage that so if it's a computer that we already have connected right over here we don't need to switch and 
this is just great. Now, moving ahead to the web interface, we will find the device info with general information, then the interface state with status of all the ports, connections and speeds. The flow interface will show us very similar info, but with more information about the receiving and sending data. There's also MAC address VLANs, logs and the optic module info, which is not active. The basic configuration we can see and change the host name, the date and clock. The port description will give us the option to have a description for each port and then the information will appear in the interface status that we have seen before and it can come in handy especially if we have all the switch working with several machines and if we are on an office with a lot of people working I don't want to disconnect any of the machines. The only one that I want to disconnect is the one that is is broken or not working so that the port description is just great because I can identify which port goes to each machine which is really really nice besides that we also have the port config with port configuration rate limit which will limit the speeds of each of the ports and a few more settings within the port options this capability is also really interesting because I can limit each port to certain bandwidth and even if that person will do a download, uh, a big download, it will never constrain the whole unit. So all the other ports will be working normally while that one does a download at a controlled limitation, which is really nice. Now, besides that, we also have the L2 config with VLAN configuration, state MAC, port channel, IPv6 configurations, among others. The the L3 config will show us the VLAN interface, DHCP server configuration, which is a great option as well, and a lot more. And we will find advanced settings with a series of options that I haven't yet been able to explore all of them yet. Next, we have the network management, some diagnosis tests, the system management, which will create uh, users will show us logs, the software will options for reset and reboot. Port panel, which will give us a visual information on the top about each port. And that is it. No more software details and no more details about the switch. In conclusion, in my opinion, this is a budget option to upgrade our network. It's really easy and you can search that to find any switch with two only 10 gigabit ports and about four one gigabit ports without a managed interface to cost the same as this one right over here. So here we are getting 24 one gigabit, four 10 gigabit besides all the options that we have on a web interface, making this a great option for those that want to upgrade the network, especially with four devices at 10 gigabit and the one gigabit for the other devices that don't require as much bandwidth. So links down below just in case you want to check this solution right over here. Hope that you enjoyed the video and if you did so don't forget that usual thumbs up right over there which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George and as always I'll see you on the next one.